This is a PSA to all the girls who want to shave their head. Do it, do it, do it, do it now. Because you know what? In five years from now, if you don't shave your head, you can never say you shaved your head. Shave that fucking head. Regardless, do it. Just do it, okay? Literally, there's there's no cons to it. You may have mental breakdowns because you can't do your hair right. Get a wig. Wigs are cheap on Depop. Just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Hit it. This ain't no disco. It ain't no country club either. <gasps> this is L.A. <gasps> Look at me. I know. We seem to be inside I'm each old. I beg your pardon. All I want to do is have a little fun before I die. Where'd you going? Yes. I can't tell if I've... Okay. <gasps> Autofuck is on. Mm. I feel like I shouldn't be donating hair in a pandemic, so I'm just letting that go. Well, it's long enough to donate. Oh, um, yes. can you go and get a clip? I've got two clips yep. on my shelf. There's, they're like two big ones. So this is October 2018 when I cut off all of my dyed blonde hair. So let's say about three years of growth to get to where I am in this video. Does that mean it's like it's like rage? a zero? It's like zero. Your, it's like your scalp. Mm. But I have the little the um, comb. Okay. So she can kind of pull it out and then do it against the comb. Okay. It would just be less even around. Whereas if you have a guard, it'll be like consistently yeah that length. But if you go a zero, then it will grow out at like correct. A nice but then I have to look at myself like. I'm Vin Diesel. <laughs> Who are some other famous baldies? baldies. Um, Gail Porter. <laughs> uh, Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor, yeah. Brittany. Brittany. Did she get all the way though? Yeah. Um, she just did she finish the job? I don't know. I wasn't there. How 
does it feel? How's the power? <laughs> oh god, I actually got a bit of heart palpitations <laughs> myself now. <sighs> okay, that's fine. It's fine. I'm going for it. Already I'm like, a weight is lifted off my shoulders. Literally, because my hair is so heavy. Oh god, this is weird. It's like being handed a body part. Why do you need oops? No, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what can go wrong? close to one another. The last one. looks up from his one ass, but all I want to do is have some fun. We've got quite a similar. Yeah, like, I think so you've too. Got you want to try it on? Just <laughs> too many. <laughs> Wouldn't you like some hair? I have a selection. <laughs> This is my channel, so if I decide to film this section in my bed, because, you know, they don't tell you this about moving to London, or maybe they do, but you're like, eh, it'll be fine. But in the winter, if you don't live in a new build, so a house built after the year 2000, it's cold. It's very cold. So I'm under my duvet. I'm sitting in bed. <clears throat> I'm still in my gym jams. And we're going to talk about why. Why did I do it? Why did I shave my head? So here is the story. Settle in, get cozy. According to my YouTube viewing history, which yes, I did go back and check, on the 5th of January 2021, I started looking up videos about girls who had shaved their heads. I will make a playlist of the videos that I watched in case this is something that you're thinking about and you are looking for some additional inspiration, some additional perspective from different people who have done it. And I do want to shout out a video that sadly is no longer uh, public, but it was Lily Red's video. That video brought me more in touch with my reason of wanting to do it, to kind of confront my own beauty standards. But this didn't all start like a year ago. I think I've always had it as something that I was curious about. Um, never really serious about wanting to do it by like a certain point in my life. It was something I was just always like, I wonder what it, what it would be like to shave my head just in kind of like an abstract way. Yeah, I think there, it's just something that I've wanted to do on and off throughout my life and having that curiosity to know what I would look like, what my head looks like, how I would react. The second part was because 
So in the UK, we had the Christmas 2020 lockdown and we knew we were going to have some months indoors with bigger restrictions in the UK. So I felt like if I hated it, I had this like built in <laughs> government sanctioned cushion to um, not go out. It was fine. Like I was only gonna, if I hated it, I could just wear a beanie all the time. And you know, I'd only really be seeing people on Zoom. It was January, so I was, you know, when I would go out, I'd be wearing a hat. So it kind of felt like I could get through, if I did really dislike it and have some sort of reaction to it that was like, oh my god, what have I done? Then the lockdown kind of felt like the perfect opportunity to go through those things because I know I would be seeing less people. The third factor of why I did it, I was seeing someone who we were talking about kind of our like, you know, what's your type? Like my type is pretty boys, like questionable sexuality, usually they turn out to like men. Um, uh, yeah, pretty boys is how I always describe it. But so we were talking about, you know, kind of like what are our, you know, very surface level characteristics that were like, oh, drool over. And he was very into girls with super short hair, girls that had gotten buzz cuts. And that didn't make me do it for him. But I do think that the fact that I was with him at the time and we were talking about that brought it up more in my awareness. Like I was remembering that like, oh yeah, I have always been interested in buzzing my hair. And because he talked about it, like that brought that up again for me. And I think it was also um, a level of comfort knowing that I, I was going to get <laughs> validation from someone that I was seeing by doing this. I knew that they would like it. And I think I can't uh, overlook the fact that it was also going to be male validation, which is something that I think will come up later and more in depth. But the fact that there is this safety of guaranteed acceptance from someone that I was romantically involved with also gave me another level of like, yeah, just it felt like, oh, this is a good time to do it. I know I'm not gonna show up and be Rosemary and be shat on by everyone. <laughs> There's a video on YouTube that's called Everyone Hates Rosemary's Quaff that I was looking at while researching this video. I look awful. What are you talking about? You look great. It's that haircut that looks awful. Hello. And welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. That's what it feels like when I've got a little makeshift microphone. Okay, so how did I feel about it once it was done? I did have initial shock and feelings like I was disconnected from my body and that when I looked at myself, what I saw didn't feel like me. Something that came up as a motif over and over again was seeing myself and immediately making an association in my mind with images of Holocaust victims. I was weirdly into the Holocaust um, when I was in school when it came up as a subject I was just super captivated by it and as I learned more about it I continued to pursue it as a subject in university and I wonder sometimes if because I did French and really loved French cinema and the Holocaust and France 
are quite intertwined and it's explored a lot within French cinema. So I think I just had a lot of images in my mind. You know, it's like people that look at crime scene photos, like you don't want to look at it, but you also can't look away. And I found myself seeking out those images at one point in time. I don't anymore, but I have a lot of them in my head. So when I saw myself as this shorn woman, I was like, this is weird. <laughs> I've seen this before. And I'm sure it's probably also connected to that I'm white with European ancestry, like Eastern Europe back there. So back there as in like back in my ancestral line. Um, so I just, I really saw it in my face and like seeing my head shaved. That also brought me to this um, concept of uh, femme tendue. There was a moment in French history where women who were uh, fraternizing, philandering, fornicating with the occupying German soldiers, they were publicly humiliated by being led into the town square and having their heads shaved. And that was also footage that I had seen in some of the film and ethics classes that I had taken. There are some historians and critics that say that that kind of humiliation that was taken out on French women was a sort of proxy for the shame that France felt as a nation for being occupied by, for the, by the Germans and um, in a way being collaborators in the violence and death that occurred to Jews and other minorities during the Holocaust. This is a more like scholarly summation than what I just explained. The period during liberation where women accused of fraternizing with the Germans were humiliated. They were shaved in public, being marked for their transgression. There were 20,000 such people, almost all women, who were punished as Nazi sympathizers. These women are referred to by historians as femme tendue, shorn women. Many revisionist historical accounts interpret these acts against women as a form of scapegoat for the easy capitulation of France to Germany, the subsequent sense of French male humiliation under the occupation and the guilt over France's collaboration with the Nazis. In short, patriarchal guilt over French collaboration was mapped onto the female body. And this article also mentions a film, Hiroshima Mon Amour, which was a film that really stuck with me, that I studied in university. And I remembered, I was like, I have this scene in my head and it's from a film and I know it's, it's a narrative film, so it's not like the documentary, kind of like newsreel footage of women that I had seen that were put through this but I didn't remember that it was actually from this film. That's the woman that I'm seeing in my head, this one who's been dragged into the square for meeting her German lover. And then she is shamed. The worst thing that you could do to a woman to degrade her is to take her hair away. So these are all things that are running through my head as I was kind of like processing this new physical element of mine and thinking about sort of all of the people that have come before me and what it has meant to them and a level of gratitude that again it was it was a choice <laughs> and also grappling with the negativity that still sort of lingers around women who have cut their hair i have of course, have a level of privilege as a cisgender white woman and that hair, for example, black women or for indigenous women has been weaponized against them. And even in instances where colonizers would use shaving people's heads, the people that they were oppressing, 
to dehumanize them and make it easier on themselves to see them as lesser than them. So there's there's really big. <laughs> so when you f say things like, oh, it feels really like brave to shave my head and you're trying to be like, oh, why is that brave? It's like, there's a lot of like human history baggage <laughs> that we don't always think about until like we're looking at ourselves and we're like, I've seen so much imagery around this and now I'm standing here and it's bringing all of that up for me. And it was also definitely connected with my deep seated beauty ideals. There were definitely days where I felt not pretty and I actually really don't like admitting that on the internet. I can admit it to myself, that's fine. It's not something I want to like put out <laughs> into the universe. It's like, I didn't think I was pretty, but I want to acknowledge it for the reality of what it was and that it literally brought home for me the pressures that women put on themselves to feel prettiness equates value or desirability and that value and desire is very much focused on those outside of you being valued by another usually men or desired by others i thought i had lost my softness which is not how I would ever describe myself physically, like, oh, I look so soft, but I think having a shaved head, I, I've said in a, a journal entry of mine that I, I looked military, I looked hard, and it seemed at odds with my understanding of myself. And yeah, on some days I was just like, I, I don't like this. I don't know. I don't like how I look. I don't like how I'm presenting. And that was yeah something that i just went through and i think it also reminded me like how much how that has groomed me into equating my femininity with my hair <laughs> which is weird because it's like literally like who the, it's so arbitrary when you say it out loud and it's like who decided these rules that like long hair is pretty and short hair is like hard and tough I went on a date with someone who said that they, I mean, there are so many red flags, Marion, it's okay, it's all a learning experience, <laughs> but they had said that they had gone, that they had, you know, dated another girl who had buzzed her hair, and she was mean, and therefore he was kind of scared that any girl who had buzzed their hair was mean. Um, of course, I'm like, this sounds like a you problem, like you elicit meanness from other people, but that's another video. So, aside from those things that I just spoke about, which I would say are like the neutral, <laughs> they're not good or bad, really. Like, it's not bad that I felt not pretty because it made me question, like, what is beauty and pretty? So like, I'm keeping those things in the neutral column. So let's go to the good things about shaving my head. Of course, showering took no time at all. It was so fast. You use less shampoo, less conditioner, obviously, because you have, you know, tiny stubs. You don't really it's just like, like a little zhuzh and your head's clean. I got to step into the world of men's hairstyling. So figuring out how to like slick back my hair and as it grew longer, like figure out the different ways that I could arrange it. Yes, it feels amazing to touch your head when you have buzzed it. The rumors are true. I no longer hold it against Kristen Stewart for when she was on the red carpet after having shaved her head and she was just all the time feeling herself up because you you do you want to it feels like velvet it's amazing it's very satisfying it does grow out in that stage like faster than you think but even like so I still have like a little buzz on at the base of my bob and 
another good thing that came out of this <laughs> was I questioned my pronouns. I think this was like a, a bit of a perfect storm scenario because we were in the pandemic and it was during a time where I think a lot of people will remember this kind of discussion that was happening on Twitter and TikTok and other places that now that we were working from home and isolated at home and we weren't having to kind of like present to other people, uh, a lot of people were having a question about like their gender identity and whether like they had been like presenting for what they had, yeah, just kind of like taken as the autopilot and when they no longer had to do that, they were just like, I think like, and also like sitting alone and having time to think about it in isolation. I did ultimately come out of that with feeling more actually I'm going to I'm going to touch on that again later. So let's just keep it good. It was it was a good thing that this this brought up me questioning like am I they them? Does that feel more me when I see myself or am I she her as I have been identifying for my entire life up until this point? Even though there were times where I felt not pretty a good thing about shaving my head was it did help me feel more comfortable about caring less about how I looked. And I think that can only be a good thing. Like it's nice to dress up and like, you know, put on eyebrows like I did today, but you can also like enjoy your state of existence when it's just you in your own, you know, you're just marinating in your own bodily fluids and like, that's nice too. Yeah. Just like, I don't know, it's both sides. Like you both care what people think and you also care less. <laughs> and I think God, that's also just like getting older too. If you feel worried about those things, I just want, you know, it's normal. It's normal. And it comes in waves. I don't know if this is something that like I heard from my therapist where it was some video I'd seen on TikTok at the time, but I, I was told, <laughs> I absorbed a technique that whenever I look in the mirror to smile at myself, it sounds very like cheesy and maybe a lot of people already do this, but I think when I was having days where I was like, I just don't really like the way I look. I would just smile at myself in the mirror and like, I've kept that habit and it's just really nice <laughs> to smile at yourself in the mirror. I don't know. I'm really into it. It works for me. D try it. You never know. You never know. I didn't think it, I, I thought it was cheesy, but I'm a full on smiling at yourself convert. Okay. And quickly, here were the bad things that came up when it was January when I did it and um, you lose a lot of heat through your head having your neck exposed. I mean, even now with my, my bob having my neck exposed, I'm like, oof, but there were months, at least four months, maybe six where I was sleeping in a beanie and a scarf every night. Cause I was cold. So that was, that was bad. That was unpleasant. Also, it was unexpectedly itchy. I think it was probably because I was wearing a hat all the time and it was like growing out into the hat. I just found my scalp to be more itchy when I had shaved it. I think maybe it was because like my scalp wasn't used to being like that exposed. Um, and also if I had done it in the summer, I would have like, my scalp would have been sunburned to shit. And the last bad thing was that even though I had shaved my head and one of the reasons was to confront my own beauty standards, capitalism stepped in to ruin the day again by sinking its claws into me and having me feel obligated to buy things like hair pomades and gel and hair accessories and a new beanie and a scarf and blah, blah, blah. but I tried to mitigate it by buying things that were more in line with my values as much as I could. So 
could I get someone's like used pomade on Depop? Like, I don't care. The story about discovering who you really are. I look like a moose. But a very cute moose. Make all the boy moose go. Yes, as soon as I buzzed it, I really wanted to bleach it platinum blonde <laughs> real bad. But I had made a kind of personal pact with myself a while ago to stop dyeing my hair. That was a boundary for myself that I was able to maintain. But yeah, I was kind of sad that I couldn't rock the like platinum buzz cut. It was definitely on, on my mind. I was looking up like those itty bitty teeny tiny like baby claw clips on Depop. I stole my flatmate Lucy's headbands. I have two of her headbands now I sometimes wear. Actually when I first cut off my mullet, the first haircut I had, um, which I think was October, I was really sad to lose my mullet because I was enjoying the like tiny pigtail look. And then pre-cutting it into the bob, there were also some like teeny tiny colored rubber bands. All of this is very much influenced by kind of the like TikTok, Depop, 90s, Y2K look trends that have made it going on. And I think I just I got lucky that mullets are in right now, dude. Gene Seberg was one of my style icons. Uh, I was trying to have a look for like when her, if her hair was shorter than it was in Breathless and she did a film called St. Joan where she plays Joan of Arc. Zoe Kravitz, of course, absolutely gorgeous. The classic Mia Farrow. She wasn't really a style icon for me, but I think there were definitely moments where I looked in the mirror and I was like, Mia Farrow called and she wants her hair cut back. For the first time, yes. For the second time, me personally, no. One and done I feel good about. Would I recommend you do it at least once? Definitely, yes. Listen, like, do it, do it, okay? I asked on Instagram if anyone had any questions, so I will answer those now. Is there a video? Am I okay? <laughs> Are any of us okay? Yeah, I'm okay. How good does it feel when there is a gentle breeze? I don't, I, you know what? Maybe when I was doing, when I was running around the park and kind of feeling the air on my head for the first time, the air on my head. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that was a cool experience for sure. Did I experience any unexpected consequences, any practical or social consequences? Most of them were the consequences of my own psyche and insecurity. I've always wanted to do this, but I'm fearful. Uh, did it feel as good as you expected? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would totally 100% do it again for the first time. <laughs> I personally don't want to do it again, but like, I've. <laughs> Plenty of the videos on YouTube that I watch are like, I did it and now I never like want to have long hair again. And like, man, like more power to you. Imagine never knowing that. This is your opportunity to find out. Did shaving my head bring me joy? <laughs> I think the joy of me doing something out of my comfort zone, like that brought me joy. How has my style evolved with a shaved head? <laughs> My style just got more like practical, like cozy, like being in my fluffy pajama bottoms all the time. Is that a style? Who did I, I think I told someone the other day that my style is like first year art student. Okay, like especially when I had the mullet with the pigtails, like that felt like I was being baby, right? Like I'm baby, which is also like, whoa, why? is this weird like infantilization of myself coming up to like cope with not having any hair. I mean, there's oh, just so much to journal about. Is your hair a symbol of your past? And shaving it is giving you a sense of freedom and less looking back. Do you know me? <laughs> All I do is look back. I love looking back. I mean, it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, I guess shaving your head can kind of feel like a new beginning. And it's nice to have your hair like grow back in all all good and healthy, even though when I did 
shave it. It it was all of my, it was it was undyed hair too. Um, that's a good question. What's something you wish you'd known before you did? Maybe to like manage my expectations about how fast it would not grow and to just like, I really had to kind of make peace with that. So if I had known like, you're not really gonna have like a quote unquote feminine hairstyle until like a year later, if I knew that from the front, maybe I would have been less like, why am I still so like page boy right now? Did I get any negative reactions and how did you deal with that? Mom, I know you're watching. <laughs> I I wouldn't say my mom and my sister were negative about it, but they <laughs> they gave me the typical kind of response that your family members will do when you've done something and they're like, you know, they don't like it. <laughs> Um, but they're polite, so they were kind of like, oh, interesting. Um, and again, like, <laughs> that's fine. I've always, like, I've always, I've always been a renegade. But also, I think it's a good thing to deal with negative reactions from other people. And by deal with them, I mean, have you experienced them and then you decide how you react to their negativity, which was me being like, eh, it's okay. Like, and like also like on the days where like, I didn't like it too. So I was like having a negative reaction to myself and all you can offer is compassion and being like, it's okay. And that's just like life, life lesson across the board. Does it feel free? Yeah, in, in a way it felt very, freeing um but then also i felt like times where i wanted to hide because i felt not pretty so i can feel both freeing and caged but caged by myself at the same time who were complex people and humans oh nice uh i did the same a few months ago into the pandemic do you like it short or will you grow it out i i'm planning to grow it out i am really enjoying this Bob, um, there's a screenshot of an Annabelle video that's like my, my goal hair, but I would, I would like to get back to my, my long hair with my, I, I'm really into like long hair with like a micro fringe. I don't know. That's just where I am right now, but that could change. How long did it take to shave full my head? Like, pff long like i think some of it was because the scissors that lucy was using were dull um but it was yeah it was a good half a day of hacking hacking that off do i have a good selection of hats at the ready it gets breezy oh this is for my friend maya um i did end up buying more beanies and i bought uh i bought some hats that really did not i just learned more about my head shape and i bought some hats that did not suit me This is the bit in therapy that I always hate. <laughs> Not hate, but I like, whenever my therapist is like, I tell her something and she's like, hmm, and what did you learn from that experience? I'm like, oh, I don't wanna think about what I learned about in the experience. I just wanna move on from it. Why do I have to like write freaking? I mean, I know I don't have to, but like, I think I get annoyed because I know it's a valuable thing and I'm just like, Ugh it's easier to move on and not think about what you learned. So for you, for you, here's what I learned. One, that I can do scary things and survive them. Two, that I can feel uncomfortable and get through those uncomfortable feelings. I don't have to try and push them away. They can come up. They can be here. I can welcome them into the room and be like, yo, hello, uncomfortable feeling. Hi, nice to meet you. Let's, let's, let's look at you. Where's this coming from? When you allow it, they usually don't want to stay as long. Three, I'm braver than I give myself credit for. And I feel 
I didn't know if I wanted to say like, I was brave by doing this, but then it felt like I was doing that weird sort of like negative feminist thing where it's like, why is it brave to shave your head? It's just like, you just wanted to do it. So you did it. And it's like, yes, but also like I had anxiety about it as well as wanting to do it. And that anxiety is valid. (laughs) You know what? So like, if it felt brave, I'm allowed to say that I'm brave. So let me say that again. I am braver than I give myself credit for. And Marion watching this back, who is editing this, why don't you just replay that one? For I learned what my head looks like. What a gift. Uh, and Emily had asked if I had any weird like cowlicks or lumps that were revealed when I shaved my head. And no, not that. I noticed. I didn't really like go in there with a like 360 degree, but there was nothing, you know, like my head was fine. It wasn't like the best head shape I've ever seen. Like some people have just like a real sexy head shape, but it was also not like, it wasn't also terrible. So, you know, an acceptable head. Five, my hair grows back a lot slower. And I thought it would. I thought it would be at this kind of deal um, by like August or something. Uh, no. Like if you want to keep a cropped buzz, like that will grow out pretty quickly. A long pixie to a bob. That, that took a while. Mullet pigtails though. This is number six. Who knew? They are cute. Learned that. Seven. I learned that I currently feel most aligned with she, her pronouns. But I had conversations with my friends like early days in having cut off my hair being like, I might be they, them, because I would look at myself and say like, I'm not seeing a girl, woman, female, whatever. I'm seeing a person. And I also want to say that I think I didn't want to keep it being buzzed. I wanted to grow it out because, and this isn't to like call myself out and like say I'm bad. I understand. I have like empathy and compassion for me wanting to go back to having long hair. But I think it was because I wanted to get back to having the privilege of a binary to have a box to put myself into. All of this sounds really negative, but I think here. This is what I wrote in my notes. Maybe I'm more articulate there. So I said, I feel most comfortable in a she, her female gender expression, but maybe one day I could be a they, them with the more that I read and the more that I get to know myself. I am more fluid than I thought. While I'm sticking with she, I noticed that I was wanting to get back to looking like a she as soon as possible. And that is likely rooted in me wanting the benefits of conforming to a binary. There was a TikTok video at the time that's been taken down. I've looked for it for way too long and I don't think it's there anymore, but it's basically a person that introduced me to the, what would you call them? Philosopher, academic, writer? Monique Wittig, and they wrote about how the concept of woman is inherently derivative of man. Like, you can't define a woman without referencing men. I haven't read it yet. It's on my list to read, but that was also kind of a, like, aha moment for me where it's like, uh, like, is she her? for me, will that feel inherently oppressive? And does identifying as they, them, does that feel more authentic to me and liberating to me as a way to identify myself? I'm ready to read that book. Number eight, I like my hair long. I like how I look when my hair is long and that's okay. That's allowed. Number nine, uh, I had the confirmation that I still have 
inner work to examine around my attachment to male validation. Yay! Exciting. And that's also okay. Like, it's okay that I still have that work to do. And it's not something that you can, like, cure by shaving your head. It's something that's ongoing in terms of healing and learning from yourself and questioning, you know, for me, why am I so, like, looking forward to having my hair long again? And what is that, like, running, you know, not running back to that comfort, but moving back towards that look of myself. Just, yeah, just being curious. The final thing, the tenth thing that I learned, for those of you counting at home, I care a lot more about my appearance than other people do. Like, pretty much everyone was super supportive or told me that having seen me do it, they were inspired to shave their head or now wanted to shave their head. So any kind of worry that I had about like, oh, well, what will people like be like? I don't know. Like people's reactions were just good. And the people's reaction, you know, I'm a Libra. <laughs> I'm a Libra and I love praise. So when people weren't doing a like song and dance being like, oh my God, you're amazing for having done this. Like, don't get me wrong. I was a little bit stung, but that's, that's on, like, that's on them. Like if someone isn't into it, like it's fine. It's my body. It's all good. It's just, well, I don't want to say it's just hair. Fight until the morning, little bit enough, then a little bit over, pushing you away. Take it for